Uh, thank uh, you so uh, much, for, thank you so much, Pastor, for your encouraging words. Can uh, can all of you hear me? If you could hear, kindly give me a thumbs up. Okay, uh, that's great. Yeah, good morning, and uh, it's I'm really glad that I could uh, uh, minister God's word unto you this uh, in the in today's service. The topic I have chosen uh, for today's service is I, Paul, prisoner of Christ. Since 26 days, we all were locked down inside the houses. And uh, by God's grace, or through this COVID-19, all of us could get a glimpse of what uh, animals in the zoo feel. They're locked down for themselves and the people watch them and they could not go out, could not eat whatever they want to. Even the deers could not run around. There yeah, we all could connect to that if not empathize at least we can sympathize with uh, all the uh, animals in the zoo i'm just uh, that, that's uh, that's on a light note lighter note i would like to take i would like to ask you to take it the title of my message as i said is i paul prisoner of christ we all know how difficult it is for us to stay back at house to be confined to four walls now the moment we hear about prison uh, you know, we all understand we would be confined to the prison, we will be confined to the four walls and would not be able to go out, we would not be able to eat what we want, we could not do whatever we, whatever we wish, we could not even walk around properly and so we all struggle, prison is a place where uh, uh, all the restrictions will be upon me, we would not be able to live our lives as we are but we will be living our lives as somebody commands us, that's what uh, a prison is and definitely nobody likes to be a prisoner nobody likes to be in prison and nobody definitely likes to be called a prisoner i still remember from my childhood nobody uh, you know if somebody comes from prison in my own hometown if somebody comes from my uh, comes from prison we we feel it very difficult to go to their houses uh, we don't we, we find it very uh, so we, we we used to get scared even to talk to those people that was the situation and once i got an opportunity uh, to, to to talk to somebody who went to prison and came and they said they never like to be called or they never like to hear uh, people talking about the experience they had uh, in the prison and, and especially the prison event so nobody like to be in prison nobody like to be called uh, uh, a prisoner what is what is a prison or what is what is a, who is a prisoner prisoner is a person legally committed or confined to uh, a prison as a punishment for a crime or while awaiting for trial this is the definition of prison on the as a punishment or as a, as they're waiting they would be ca confined they would not be able to do whatever they want to they would be confined to your place uh, geographically they would be confined to a certain kind of lifestyle but here we find uh, an interesting statement from apostle paul as i told you no one likes to be called prisoner but this man he likes to call himself as a prisoner he says i paul prisoner of christ not only once he he says this four times once you find in ephesians 3 1 and ephesians 4 1 philemon uh, chapter 1 verse 1 and 9 in these four in the places he calls himself himself as prisoner of christ paul was writing these letters ephesians philemon philippians uh, from the prison itself paul at the end of his life he was in roman prison and he wrote these letters if we say any greatest teachings of apostle paul we can we can say that all those great teachings have come from book of ephesians philippians colossians philemon all these are called prison epistles at the end of his life he knows he is going to be killed uh, in few days and then he spoke the most valuable words of his life in ephesians 3 1 he says for this reason i paul the prisoner of christ at the end of his life he's so proud to call himself as a prisoner of christ and introduce himself as the prisoner of christ and um, 
but apostle paul in apostle paul's words the word i paul prisoner of christ the imprisonment he referred here is an entirely different one this is not an imprisonment uh, of the normal prisoners where legally somebody is committed or confined to a place of course paul was in roman uh, roman prison but he doesn't uh, uh, he doesn't say that he is a prisoner of rome but he calls himself as a prisoner of christ what kind of the imprisonment is this that's what we need to understand that's what my uh, message is all about paul the prisoner of christ how did we, to understand that we need to look at how paul became the prisoner primarily i'm not talking about uh, uh, the ge geopolitical issues uh, that have that that caused paul to be behind the bars but i'm talking about how paul became prisoner of christ not, not the prisoner of rome how did paul become a prisoner of christ number one reason or number one step for paul becoming a prisoner of christ is he was captured by christ we uh, lena read in the scripture reading acts chapter 9 verse 1 to 19 where we can find a beautiful uh, explanation of how apostle paul encountered uh, jesus christ on his way to damascus damascus it is written acts chapter 9 verse 3 onwards as he journeyed he came near damascus and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him saul saul why are you persecuting me and he said who are you lord then the lord said i am jesus whom you are persecuting it is hard for you to kick against the gods uh, so he trembled and astonished said lord what do you want me to do then the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. And the men who journeyed with, with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no one. Then Saul arose from the ground, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no one. But they led him by the hand and brought him to Damascus. And he was three days without sight and neither ate nor drank now there was a certain disciple at damascus named ananias and to him the lord said in a vision ananias and he said here i am lord so the lord said to him arise and go to the street called straight and inquire at the house of judas for one called saul of Tarsus. for behold he is praying this is the uh, and this is uh, this explains about how apostle paul encountered jesus christ in his life till then he was persecuting the church he in fact he got orders from high priest to go and arrest the people who are following jesus christ in the uh, area of damascus at Tarsus, all these areas so that he can uh, arrest them and bring them to jerusalem and so that they can he, they can be punished he met jesus on his road to damascus and as soon as jesus he met jesus the great light was shown upon him he could not look at jesus and he fell from the horse as he fell from the horse he fell from his religion he fell down from his pride he fell down from his uh, superiority complex that he has for he is a pharisee he is a rich man he is a jew of jew uh, and uh, he fell down from there the moment he met jesus he asked him when uh, when jesus called him saul saul why are you persecuting me directly he admitted himself as the servant of jesus christ and here jesus captured paul completely paul said what do you want me to do lord paul called jesus as lord so this moment onwards paul's life has been totally changed when we, if we talk about the life of paul his life would be explained as his life uh, before before the encounter as well as his life after the encounter this became the major event in his life where his life has been totally 180 degrees turn and which changed his goal his direction his lifestyle his teaching his beliefs his philosophy uh, his uh, his uh, the way he treats people everything a to z in apostle paul's life have been totally changed by this one incident where he met jesus and called jesus as lord his goal his message have been totally 
changed and in his name also have been changed from Saul to Paul and uh, he became he he who was a pro persecutor of the church have become the propagator of the gospel of Jesus Christ he is the first apostle called by resurrected Jesus Christ all the apostles called by Jesus and he is the first apostle called by the resurrected Jesus he only got that great privilege his life have been <coughs> totally changed one counter one encounter with Jesus have changed to Paul's life completely and he uh, support for Christ he uh, he he even like uh, uh, as apostle Paul writes in um, Second Corinthians 11 to 23, he says, uh, Are the ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more in labors, more abundantly, in stripes above measure, in, uh, in prison more frequently, in deaths often. From the Jews, five times I received uh, 40 stripes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was uh, shipwrecked. A night and day I have been in deep. In journeys often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of the Gentiles, in perils of the city, in perils of the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among uh, false brethren, in uh, weariness and toil, in sleeplessness often, in hunger and in thirst, in fasting often, in cold and nakedness beside the other things what come upon me daily after this incident apostle have, apostle paul have gone through all sorts of troubles all sorts of difficulties persecutions and punishments and he took all of them just because of only one incident that is the encounter he had with jesus christ on the road to damascus damascus that single incident have changed apostle paul life completely and because Apostle Paul called Jesus as Lord. This is the incident where Jesus have completely captured Apostle Paul and Apostle Paul became the prisoner of Jesus Christ. First thing in his life was he became the prisoner of Jesus Christ because he was captured by Jesus Christ. Now my question to all of us is this. Do we have any of such encounters with Jesus? Have you encountered Jesus any time in your life? Did you have any? You may, you may not need to have uh, such a dramatic or uh, supernatural experience. But do you have an experience where you met Jesus? Where you understood that Jesus is your Lord? Or we, or we are uh, just continuing a Christian religion just because we are into a Christian Christian family and following some principles of this Christian religion. Do we have an encounter with Jesus Christ? I would like to ask all of you to think about it. It's not necessarily to be like Apostle Paul, where you who have to hear audible voice of Jesus Christ or physically you have to see Jesus Christ. Or even at least, do you have any moment where the scripture spoke to you? And from then, your life have been changed. I would like to ask you to introspect to yourself and think about it. In case any of us do not have that, it is it may be the right time for us to call call unto Jesus and say, Jesus, I really want to encounter. I wanted to meet. I want to meet you. <coughs> I want to see you and feel you. Uh, can you speak to me and uh, change my life. This is this may be a time for us to ask Jesus to do that. This is the first step to become the prisoner of Christ. Apostle Paul became prisoner of Christ because he was captured completely by Jesus Christ. And the second step in Apostle Paul becoming the prisoner of Christ is this. He was captivated by Jesus Christ. First, first he was captured by Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus. Secondly, he was captivated by Jesus Christ. He, in fact, prisoners are the people who were being forcefully pushed into prison. Nobody liked to go inside the prison. But uh, Apostle Paul case, him being a prisoner of Jesus Christ, it is a voluntarily imprisonment. It is a different kind of imprisonment than the regular imprisonments. Here, Apostle Paul voluntarily he gave himself to become the prisoner of uh, 
uh, Christ Jesus. It is because he was totally captivated by the love of God. What he meant, uh, what he meant at Jesus Christ. He was captivated by the love he received from Jesus Christ. Uh, I would like to ask you to imagine with me. Uh, so, sorry, I would like to give a small example. Uh, you know, uh, I watch, I love watching. Uh, uh, mountaineering documentary, especially uh, Everest, K2, and uh, various mountains. I watched every documentary on Everest, which is available on YouTube. I can literally, I'm literally saying I watched everything in every expedition, in every documentary. They say at least one or two people after reaching the summit, they don't like to come back. They don't want to come back. They don't mind dying over there though they are physically fit they don't want to come back it is because they were totally captivated by seeing the beauty or feeling the feel of being at the top of the uh, uh, of this world you know one after seeing the exuberant beauty of mountains they don't want to come back so they were they were cap captivated completely by that beauty and they don't uh, they don't even consider their lives uh, in uh, in comparison with enjoying the beauty of the mountains there are so many people who died like that or all teenagers uh, would be knowing uh, you know some kind of at least some kind of uh, uh, connection or you might have felt some kind of romantic thoughts in your teenage like you know the cup the boy and girl who fell in love they may feel or they sometimes they write poems also saying hey darling looking into your eyes i forget the forget the world around me even the rivers come upon me the seas take over the land that doesn't matter i i still love to look into your hands even the volcanoes were exploding or the stars are falling on the earth we could not take i could not take my eyes off you you know such kind of romantic words we could find everywhere in poems especially in teenage uh, romantic stories in those days the feel was like this you know looking at the beauty of the other person and we totally captured or captivated by the love towards the other person we don't mind whatever happening around us and at the same time it has both, it has some negative uh, you know there are some negative examples also there are a lot of teenagers in the name of love they have lost their lives they lost their careers for them at that moment they found they felt that whatever they have the connection they have with the other person is so very important and they don't mind losing their careers and family and other stuff i'm not here to judge whether it is right or wrong but uh, what i'm what am i trying to say is there are moments in all of our lives where we feel totally captivated either by beauty all by love or <coughs> some of this kind so here apostle paul became prisoner of jesus christ because he was totally captivated by the love of jesus christ uh, he, he was totally captivated by the love of jesus christ and his con his conversion uh, from at the point like you know from road to damascus was not just a theological conversion or a philosophical conversion or a social conversion but it is a relational conversion apostle paul had when he met jesus christ and called him lord not his theology it is not that his theology alone changed previously he was a pharisee oh now i changed my theology and i become a christian oh previously i was practicing judaism oh now i will change i practice the christian uh, christian um, you know uh, be uh, whatever christians practice or previously i uh, i was a pharisee and i was a jew i was i used to mingle with only pharisees and jews now i'll change i'll mingle with the only christian brethren for fellowship it is not a, it is not such kind of conversion apostle paul had but it is a relational conversion previously for him the way he he uh, he was related to God is totally through religion. That's why uh, Apostle Paul writes in Galatians saying like, when his religiosity pleased the Lord, he met him. He was he converted him. Apostle Paul's religiosity pleased the Lord. But previously he was connected to God, but the way he was connected to God is through religion. But from the point of Damascus, 
his experience on the road to Damascus. His life totally changed because he had an, another kind of experience with Jesus, which is uh, relational and which changed his life completely. And uh, the way he related to God has been changed. And especially we can find the kind of relationship Apostle Paul had in uh, various parts of the Bible. And first he changed and then he stayed a couple of weeks in Jerusalem and uh, uh, and then he moved to uh, Arabia where he spent three years of uh, honeymoon time with Jesus Christ. Apostle Paul writes about the love of God because he was totally captivated by his love. And he writes in Romans chapter 8 verse 37 to 39. He says, <coughs> yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am per persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor uh, height nor depth nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord look at the language Apostle Paul uses here he says nothing can separate us from the love of God how could he speak such words unless he has a very deep connection, very deep relational connection with Jesus Christ? Unless he experienced the love of Christ to such a profound depths, he would not be able to speak this kind of language and this kind of words. It, is, it sounds just like the teenager says, you know whatever happens to the world that doesn't bother me i love to look into your eyes eyes i would i would like i would like to sit next to you he's saying nothing in this world can separate us from the love of god the love of god is so powerful it is captivating and uh, apostle paul was totally engrossed and have give, have been given himself into the love of god that's why he became the prisoner of Jesus Christ and he also writes in Ephesians chapter 9 to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God he says knowing the love of Christ it surpasses knowledge it is beyond knowledge knowing the love of Christ is not having the knowledge of the scripture it is not uh, having the theological understanding it is not uh, being able to recite the entire scripture it is beyond that it is beyond his thinking it is beyond his theology it is beyond his philosophy that's why i said when apostle paul encountered jesus his conversion was not just theological he being a jew he changed to christianity that is not the only situation here <coughs> here we can clearly see that he was been totally given himself into the love of christ that's why uh, he says knowing the love of christ is beyond theological knowledge or any knowledge it surpasses knowledge in such a way he was connected and uh, he was totally captivated by the love of christ that's why he could say in philippians chapter 1 verse 21 he he says uh, for to me to live is christ and to die is gain who would say the who would say such words to anyone for me to live is christ and to die is gain it sounds just like the teenagers tell uh, their uh, lovers like you know it is better for me to die than to lose you. No? He was totally captured. He was totally captivated by the love of Christ. Love of Christ. My question to uh, all of us, and it is a very serious thing, serious concern for all we Christians to think about. Are we having a captivating relationship with Christ that stands strong in the times of troubles and trials? Are we having a relationship like that? Or we are just connected to Christ through the church, through the uh, practices we have in the church, or just reading the, or our relationship with God limited to reading the scripture, uh, or praying and going to church, or act, being part of some kind of Christian activities? Or we have a deep, emo, deep emotional, a profound relational connection with Jesus, which can captivate us to become the prisoner of christ in other words a jesus free do we have that in case if we don't have that let me tell you my brethren we are still in christian religion but we did not know christ yet and uh, today is the day for us we can ask jesus help us so that we can relate to him we can we can be in relationship with him we can experience that 
depths of his love in relationship with him do you have such a captivating relationship with jesus and the third uh, the third step apostle paul to become the prisoner of christ is he was totally controlled by christ number one was he was captured by christ number two he was captivated by christ and number three he was is he was controlled by jesus christ and he 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 says that in galatians chapter 2 verse 20 i have been crucified with christ it's no longer i who live but christ lives in me and the life which i live in the flesh i live by the faith in the son of god who loved me and gave himself for me he says that i was crucified with christ this is no longer i who live christ lives in me christ is the one who is uh, living in and through me he is the one who is controlling me i would like to use uh, i would like to use a better word that is instead of control we can say he compels jesus constantly through his love compels us to do his will that's what apostle paul meant it is not just controlling like uh, some officers controlling the subordinates but he is compelling us. Apostle Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. He says the love of God compels us to take the word of uh, reconciliation to the people. So here Apostle Paul was compelled by Jesus Christ's love. And he was uh, controlled by Jesus himself. And that's why in Acts chapter 21 verse 12 to 13. Uh, in his last journey to Jerusalem. Many prophets came to him and they suggested him. You better not to go to uh, Jerusalem because you would be imprisoned there and they are going to punish you and they, they are ultimately they are going to kill you but Apostle Paul says no I have to go to Jerusalem I know I'm going to suffer there I'm going to be imprisoned and I'm going to be uh, killed ultimately but he goes to <coughs> he rejects that suggestion and he goes to Jerusalem it is because on his first encounter with Jesus Christ Ananias to Ananias Jesus said he is going to be a chosen vessel and he is going to testify my name before the kings and the excuse me he is going to witness my name before the kings and the principal I mean the powers and various leaders and you know in such a way he is going to uh, witness Jesus that is the reason he doesn't uh, get scared and he doesn't step back uh, going to Jerusalem and he was ready even to go to the point of death for Jesus Christ that's why he also writes in Philippians uh, chapter 4 verse uh, 20 uh, in sorry uh, in Acts chapter 27 we find that he is going to uh, Jerusalem without uh, without listening to anyone and uh, he was captured there and he was pu punished and uh, uh, troubled over there since the beginning of his uh, since the beginning of his christian life he continuously he did whatever jesus said he jesus asked him to go to macedonia and apostle paul went to macedonia and jesus told him that he would testify before the caesar so he went uh, through the jerusalem until see and to even to rome to testify him uh, about uh, jesus christ in front of caesar <coughs> and one interesting thing we find uh, in Philippians chapter 24 verse 22 is this Apostle Paul was in prison even though he was in prison he did not stop witnessing Jesus Christ he could even reach to the family of Caesar where some of Caesar's family members became Christian that's why we can find in Philippians 4 22 uh, he says uh, all the saints salute you chiefly that they are of the Caesar's household caesar's household also they heard the they heard the gospel of jesus christ from apostle paul apostle paul though he was in the roman prison he did not stop focusing and working for what he has been chosen for what what jesus christ has commanded him that is to witness him before the kings and the lords he could reach till the caesar's family somebody being in a prison and reaching to the caesar's family is not a small issue it is just like somebody being in Tihar jail uh, and reaching the family of our prime minister which is highly impossible but apostle paul could reach the family of caesar <coughs> means we can understand the kind of commitment he has towards the calling he has in his life 
he was totally controlled by the spirit of god that's why he could go and testify him in front of caesar's family and ultimately in front of caesar he testified and was being beheaded and gave his life for jesus christ Ma, the question we have to think today is are we controlled by christ are we controlled by christ are we able to focus on what christ is, god is leading us in our life or we are just controlled by ourselves or controlled by the world or the media or whatever is happening around us or by money there are so many things people are being controlled as christians it is our mandate that we should be controlled by christ apostle paul was captured by jesus apostle paul he was uh, captivated by jesus christ and he was controlled by jesus christ and he became the prisoner of jesus christ and as christians it is very important for us to understand what apostle paul paul the prisoner wants wants in our life at the end of his life he he prays for certain things that <coughs> we should be possessing and uh, that would be my concluding slide today uh, what apostle paul the prisoner of christ want in our lives that we can find in ephesians chapter 3 verse 14 to 21 this is a prayer he is offering for the church almost at the end of his life he writes for this reason i bow my knee to the father of our lord jesus christ from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man that the christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and the depth and height to know the love of christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of god now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to that power that works in us to him be glory through church by jesus christ to all generations forever and ever apostle paul wants that we should be strengthened in our inner man so that we may have christ living in us by faith when we have that we may be able to understand the depths of god's love how deep wide height and uh, height uh, the love of christ is when we know the depths of jesus love we will be grounded and rooted in his love when we are grounded and rooted in his love we will be able to understand the love of god which is which surpasses knowledge which is beyond knowledge when we have that we will be completely filled by god himself when we are completely filled by god god would be able to do the things which are beyond our imagination and beyond our prayers itself apostle paul wants these things to happen in our life and these things completely happen in the life of apostle paul in his teachings in his knowledge we can see the depth of uh, his the, the depth uh, of his understanding of love of god in his work we can understand the kind of deep connection he has with god how deeply he is related to god that can be seen through his work and uh, uh, we can see how he was full filled with christ himself in the sufferings he suffered for christ and we all know how apostle paul, how god worked through the life of apostle paul it is beyond our imagination it is beyond our prayers also 2000 years ago he ministered even today apostle paul is influencing our lives through his teachings so because apostle paul has become the prisoner of christ he was captured by christ captivated by christ and controlled by christ it is totally because of christ's love which captivated uh, and uh, captured and controlled apostle paul's life may the lord grant us with the grace that we may be able to have an encounter where we can uh, where we can be captured by christ we may have an experience of his love where which can captivate us and we may be having a spirit that uh, submits to christ and where we will be controlled by the spirit of christ may the lord bless us with these in jesus name amen thank you